Um, so, hello, good afternoon. Uh, we are here for the Octavia project overview and update. That's our last talk in the big Octavia series as, at this summit. Um, my name is German Eichberger. I'm with Rackspace. And I'm Adam Harwell. I'm with GoDaddy. And our fearless leader, Michael Johnson, is on top. He did most of the slides and is our PTL. Um, uh, yeah, un unfortunately, he is unable to make it due to budgetary issues. So um, hopefully we'll see him in the future, but uh, it's just us today. Okay, and, and one more thing. They are recording that and putting it up for generations to come to view. So we will allow uh, questions at the end, so don't do them in between. Okay. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing is, uh, what does Octavia actually do? And Octavia does is, is basically the project for network load balancing. So it provides brings load balancing to OpenStack, and we provide a scalable, on-demand, and self-service access to a network load balancing service in a technology-agnostic manner for OpenStack. What we mean with that is we provide an API, which is the same, regardless if you use, um, there's a, Octavia is kind of overloaded, the Octavia load balancer, and the project is also called Octavia, or if you're using an A10, a VMware, or a F5. So, so it doesn't really matter what's in the back end, you, can, uh, you have an API which is basically the same. And Octavia, as I said, is the reference load balancing provider, and this one is highly available, and it scales with your compute environment. So basically, it fires up VMs or similar, and depending how big you make them, the more you can load balance. Yeah, so uh, this project has a somewhat long history, not as long as some of the others around here, but uh, we were founded during Juno. Um, we've got 65 contributors from 28 companies for the latest release, uh, which is Awesome, so thank you everybody for contributing. Um, I, we may have some contributors here, uh, so thank you a ton. Um, we started out as scalable load balancer driver for Neutron LBAS, uh, but now we do all of network load balancing for OpenStack. So we used to, you know, we used to be a driver. Um, Neutron LBAS is now kind of merging into Octavia. Um, so yeah, we used to be a sub-project of Neutron. Now we are a top-level OpenStack project as of Okada. So that's awesome, too. Uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, and we were, for two user surveys in a row, the number one uh, networking feature that people were actively using, interested in using, or looking forward to using. So I um, think we're hearing your feedback. And uh, definitely go fill out those surveys when you get them. Um, it's really useful for us to know that we're actually something you're wanting to use. So. Okay, then some key features of the load balancing project in OpenStack and Octavia. We have flexible network topologies. That means we, we can plug into public network, private network, work with uh, floating IPs, whatever you need, uh, flat subnets, whatever. Uh, our reference driver, which we also call Octavia, provides highly available load balancer and uses VMs for that right now. And we have a highly available and scalable control plane, so it's shared nothing, so you can scale it whatever you want it and put more stuff there. And we support layer seven load balancing, and we also support session persistence, so, and we also support TLS offloading. Uh, for TLS offloading, we require you to use the Barbican project to store the certificates, because we didn't really wanna, we, we really didn't feel that we could do that in a secure way, and so, Barbican is the secure secret store in OpenStack, and so we are leveraging them for our certificate management and storage. All right, so uh, for Pike, our new features and enhancements, um, we d are wrapping up right now, merging the Neutron LBAS, LBAS v2 API into our standalone Octavia v2 endpoint. So at this point, the LBAS v2 API um, that, you're, that hopefully you're already using through Neutron LBAS will be available as part of Octavia, so you can use Octavia directly. And we have a Keystone service for that uh, called Load Balancer now. So um, we also have a new client, and that will go directly to that service type, Load Balancer. Um, and it's part of OpenStack client, finally, so no more deprecated Neutron client. Um, you can see the, the docs for both of those things right there. Um, we also have 
support for Octavia deployment with OpenStack Ansible, which is cool. Um, we know a lot of people were asking us, like, how do we actually deploy this thing? Like, we don't want to just look at the DevStack plugin. So there are roles for OpenStack Ansible now uh, that will allow you to deploy this. Um, and I think also uh, Kala and Kala Ansible have roles for uh, building Docker stuff as well. And Triple O. Uh, yeah, and we have also uh, support in Triple O coming in Pike. So that's awesome. Um, See. Again, docs for all of those there. We'll make these slides available after, um, after the session. Okay, so talking about the release themes. So the major focus in Pike was to increase the modularity and user experience. So we feel user experience goes up when we do the API migration because now we don't have two databases anymore. We only have one database as a source of truth. And there has been problems with syncing them. So the LBAS database on the neutron end sometimes got out of sync with the Octavia database. And that's, that's something we improve, will be improved in, in Pike. And so that will improve the user experience. The other thing we are doing right now, we have to use the neutron client. The neutron client is deprecated. And we are moving everything into the Octavia client. And the Octavia, we moved the Octavia client into the OpenStack <coughs> client, which also makes user experience better because you now can use the OpenStack client um, users use for everything else. And, and the modularity is we are basically not anymore in Neutron, and so it's easier to install us um, in, in the system. So we don't need to go in lockstep with Neutron anymore. Before, you had to install the same version of load balancing as you had with Neutron, and now you can kind of keep it out of sync, which makes your cloud more modular. So you don't have to upgrade Neutron to get the latest load balancing anymore. Yeah, um, sorry, excuse me for a second. <clears throat> so yeah, our release themes for Queens are uh, a little bit similar. We also are still focusing on user experience a lot. <clears throat> um, and also interoperability and scalability. So. Uh, one of our focuses for Queens, again, is we want to be able to scale a lot better. Um, so we're hoping we can get uh, our active active stuff going. Uh, and we're, again, really focusing on user experience this time, um, I think, on the, the UI as well. Uh, so our, our UI has been kind of stale uh, for a few releases, but we're hoping that we can get that uh, beefed up a little bit, a little bit more featureful, and um, really be able to expose all of what we can do. So uh, that's uh, kind of our, our focus for Queens. OK, then looking further in the future, one of our biggest things we'd like to have in the Octavia load balancing thing is our active active load balancers. We, we have submits right now, patches, which would bring this co uh, capability to us. But we have to, but the people who did that left. And so we have to kind of pick that back up. And we are working with uh, other other partners to help us uh, realizing our vision for active, active load balancing, which will allow you then to scale horizontally the load balancing uh, system. We also want to add support for vendor drivers on the new Octavia v2 API. So right now, the vendor drivers are in Albas v2, and we haven't started on uh, porting things over, which is a big green goal, but we want to definitely, definitely do that. We also want to add load balancing flavors. There, there are basically two things you want to do with that. So one, it's uh, for the Octavia load balancer. Right now, you have to pick your Nova flavor for all the load balancers you are creating, for all the load balancing VMs you are creating. And so you have to do one size fits all. With the, with the uh, when flavors come, then you can basically have different sized uh, VMs based on the load balancing function you're looking for. For instance, if you want to do TLS offloading, you might want to get a flavor which has a higher CPU or something like that. For, for the hardware vendors and for the load third party vendors, flavors will allow to unlock specific features on their load balancers, which we don't support in our API because the API is supposed, basically only supports things which everybody can do. And some vendors have specific things which, which they are unique for. And so flavors will allow to unlock that but if you're going to use that, then you have the risk that if you ever switch vendors, it won't port over. The last thing we want to do, and uh, Adam talked to that, is we want to improve our Horizon dashboard. So right now, it doesn't uh, allow you to define L7 load balancing things. But we want to add that in, in Queens and bring it up to parity with everything. 
Yes, and uh, looking forward to R, um, we uh, still want to focus a lot on scalability, and I think the, the active active stuff uh, is going to roll into that as well. Um, and also resiliency, um, we're looking at, I don't know if we have a slide on it, but um, we've been looking at uh, job board for a while. Uh, so we use task flow um, and being able to pick up jobs um, with job board uh, would increase our resiliency a lot. So right now, if a worker dies while it's in progress on something, uh, things can get a little strange. Uh, mm -hmm. So job board should let us uh, pick stuff up a lot better. Um, and then manageability, we have uh, designs on a, an operator style API. So uh, allowing operators to do things like manually fail over load balancers. Actually, there's a patch for that already yeah. in Pike um, that hasn't merged yet, but mm -hmm. um, we're getting there, and so by R, we want to have something a little bit more full, fully fledged out. Um, and again, as always, user experience, because for us, the user experience is the most important thing there is. Uh, we want people to be able to use this easily and actually feel like um, it's not a roadblock for them to be able to create a load balancer. It should be fairly simple. OK, then uh, basically, that's so if so basically, we have a lot of questions. We need your help. And we really need to help you with, uh, we need, so we basically we want to know what you're using in production so we can serve you better. We, we want to know which load balancing features you would like to see us, to see us implement so we can prioritize our work. We also have a request for developers. You can never have enough people working on something. So we can really use some help on the QA end. We can use some help on the UI and you basically can, you can basically, and we can also, we also need some help with the core review, with the reviews. So if somebody has, wants to become core reviewer, we have um, definitely open positions there as well. Yeah, and yeah. If you if you're looking to be a, a core reviewer for for Elbas, definitely, um, it's we will help you get there. Um, like, just start start reviewing. Come by, talk to us. Um, we we definitely have slots open for cores. Yeah, we we definitely have have. Especially Michael, we have spent a lot of time mentoring people when they approach us and meeting with them. So, so now we would like to open that up for your questions. If you have any questions for us, uh, please step to the microphone. Since it's, since it's recorded, it's important that we do it all over the microphone. So, yeah. Okay. Again, anyone who, who wants to tell us, like, if you have a deployment of this, like, what are you using exactly? Are you on? Um, Neutron Albas V2, at least, hopefully. Um, are you, do you have specific concerns about the upgrade no. uh, moving forward to Octavia once Neutron Albas is deprecated? Um, like, what vendor drivers are you using that uh, mm -hmm. you want to okay. yeah. make sure that we support mm -hmm. properly? Um, so. And yeah, and like I said, what, what features would you, do you think we're missing that you'd really like to mm -hmm. see? So I know um, we've heard a lot about uh, re-encryption on the back end when we do um, TLS termination. So that's one of the things we're looking at. Um, yeah. And uh, I know there's some other stuff, but like, what, mm -hmm. what would you like to see? Any, yeah. Anybody? We can wrap this up now and head to lunch if no one's, uh, or, no one's or got Or we can anything. ask people questions. Are you using Alba SV2? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, so um, I think we're using Alba SV2. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have a hardware vendor plugin we're using, mm -hmm. uh, which is A10. Uh, okay. Some of the things we are interested in are uh, exported for. OK, yeah. Um, so header insertion in general. Mm -hmm. um, and what was the other thing? I, I thought we had Yeah, so before. in at least in Pike, maybe Okada, but probably Pike, we, um, we definitely Pike, we added more customized uh, header insertion stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to add even more. But I know Exported 4 yeah. is one of those. I don't know, what, what cloud are you running, or what uh, release We're, are you running on? We are on uh, Mitaka right now. OK, yeah, so I think soon. probably, yeah, probably by Newton or yeah. Okada, you should be able to see that. And in the general use case, is the flavor support supposed to be uh, helping us pass, you know, vendor specific yes. features in? Yes. Yeah. So. Um, so basically, with flavors, uh, one of the use cases that German mentioned was like when you do TLS offloading, um, you might need a be a little bit beefier box, or you might need uh, maybe to deploy to a different cell or something, um, depending on what the hardware you have is, and that'll allow us to say like, I need the flavor 
TLS maybe, and mm -hmm. it, it depends, like the operator mm -hmm. defines what those flavors um, are, but um, it would allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if you're using a hardware vendor and we don't expose something, you could use a flavor that enables advanced features. Is that uh, on the, the load balancer level or the listener level or? Uh, it's on the, I believe it's on the load balancer on level. On the load balancer yeah. level, yeah. Okay. Will be on load, the so, flavor will be there, so. Yeah, you would, you would create a, a load balancer of type, and even you could even go so far as to do, like I would cre like to create a software load balancer versus a hardware load balancer, right. that's how you want to set things but, up. But if you're really interested in flavors, there's a spec currently up, and you can comment on that. Yeah, okay. the, I know the spec is, uh, needs a little rework right now, so the state that it's in is not the final state that it will be in, but <laughs> right. um, we could that means Right now is a great time to participate yeah, in that discussion. We're really interested in supporting features that might not even be in the API. And we don't yeah. Have to yeah, yeah, that's why. API we, every time yeah, that that's why we want to do flavors. Yeah, so. yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. Mm. Anything else? Oh. Now we can specify only one image for Amphora. Mm. Right. Yes, so, um, currently. is there any plans to support multiple images? Oh, different images. That's that's an interesting. That's an interesting question. We yeah. would probably put that uh, if we do that. Yeah, that will probably will be part of the flavor support yeah. that you can then also. Mm -hmm. You haven't thought about that, but uh, I think we probably need to do that since the images are tied to the size of your VM. So yeah. 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 We happens. should definitely. Mm -hmm. I think. That now that you mentioned that, at least I have that in my head. So yeah, <laughs> the, we should do that as part of flavors. Yeah. Um, so I think you should probably see that as part of flavors. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank. That's an excellent, yeah. like, exact, yeah. perfect example of what we'd like to hear. Because mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. that can definitely uh, we can make sure that that's in there. Yeah. Well, anything else? Any other questions? You want to see me do a horrible dance up here? Because I will. Okay. I'll do this until oh, you ask me oh, a question. Oh, in the back. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, it was regarding um, deleting load balancing through the horizon. <coughs> Maybe not Octavia, but the previous version. Um, is, is it possible, will it be possible using Octavia to do it through horizon rather than, let's say, CLI or whatever? Uh, yeah, so we do have um, the horizon plug in um, for Neutron Elbash. It's Neutron Elbash Horizon Dashboard. Yeah, they, yeah it's a, we have a Horizon Dashboard for Neutron yeah. Elbash, and it works. In, and we, we stopped doing releases because nothing changed. And we recently picked that up because it confused people. Yeah, so, 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 we now, so, so we released the dashboard, even if nothing changes, alongside our other releases. And we also tested it recently. Um, and so it's, so it's working. It just doesn't have all the features the command line client yeah, has, but you so can sure. but you can create load balancers. You can create listeners. It's just the biggest omission is L7. L7 yeah. Loads. If you're if you didn't see that, it's possible you're on one of the releases where we didn't cut a release of that. Because mm -hmm. I know there was one where we didn't cut a release, which yeah. is, like you said, caused a lot of confusion. So. Yeah, we, we've been cutting the releases now, but yeah, there is a Neutron LBAS dashboard that you should be able to use but the, um, the in dashboard Horizon. Is carried on over to. Uh, yeah, and then we basically, uh, what we did is we cloned the Neutron LBAS dashboard project into Octavia okay. dashboard sure. um, yeah. because it's the same API, sure. um, and we're just going to be maintaining that one moving forward. Okay, thank yeah. you. Still have plenty of time. If nobody has anything, um, I know I I will be around um, obviously for the the rest of the conference. So um, mm -hmm. if yeah. you see me around, feel free to ask questions. Um, mm -hmm. You can reach us on IRC uh, yeah. practically all the time. And so. the other thing we might want to add, we, we see a lot of our vendor friends here. So if you have questions for specific vendors, it's a good <laughs> chance right now too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, that's another question. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Second question is: um, Is there any plans to boot and, for instance, by uh, using um, Cinder volumes? Oh. Hmm. That is an interesting one. Uh, I don't know if we've considered that. No, we haven't considered Cinder volumes. Um, I think it's um, uh, useful to mm -hmm. mig migrate um, Amphora instance when. We, we have to update compute nodes. 
Uh, yeah. Um, so, right. So that's an interesting one. Uh, generally, our strategy on Amphora and our, our recommendation is that essentially, if if you're done with an Amphora, we treat them kind of like disposable entities. So mm -hmm. um, if if you do a migration, we generally say like set up um, set things up so that all the provisioning will happen to the the new cells or whatever, and um, just sh uh, manually fail over. Uh, the old ones, and hopefully, again, as part of the operator API, um, we'll have mm -hmm. a more automated, like, friendly way to do yeah. this. Um, but basically, go through and shoot the mm -hmm. old Amphora, and they'll uh, be recreated automatically mm -hmm. on the new stuff. Um, if you're running in single topology, that's a little scary, obviously, because no, you'll have some downtime. But no, you don't have downtime. Uh, well, very short, there is. Yeah. It exists. It exists. It exists. Yeah. Um, if you're on active passive, that's a lot less scary. Um, because that way you can, at least it'll swing over very quickly uh, to the new one. Um, if you do want to live migrate, um, it, it is an interesting point. It's not really what we recommend mm -hmm. as a strategy, but um, I mean, I, yep. people, people want to do all kinds of things. Uh, I, it's yeah. probably a valid use case. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably we would can, be best we can look if you, at that. Yeah. What would be best you write us an RFE uh, request yeah. for enhancement, and then we can discuss that in our meetings. Yeah, so we have so a, a launch pad, um, which I, we didn't put that slide in mm -hmm. this, but um, drop by our the Elbas or the Octavia, yeah, Octavia launch pad, um, and put in a mm -hmm. bug or an RFE, whatever, and, and then with yeah. that, and we'll definitely take a look at what would be required yeah. to do that. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Comment on the gentleman's question. Mm -hmm. So um, we do block live migrate, so live mm -hmm. migrate without shared storage, and that actually works really well. So. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is uh, about booting uh, flavors on, on Cinder. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of talk about that right now, making that kind of. Uh, I think it actually already works, like having it, uh, the glance image be directly a, a Cinder volume. Mm -hmm. Um, there was just a talk, just the previous session okay. from um, yeah. one of the Cinder devs about that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't yeah. know, but yeah, so I, I think it's actually possible already. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's possible okay. too to, to, to do the Cinder things. Our philosophy, so so, we, so on the other hand, we also get, so there's always the thing in OpenStack, you, how much of OpenStack are you using, or do you want to go a, 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 without OpenStack, and we often we also get requests from people who say, hey, can we use Octavia actually without OpenStack? Can we use it with VMware? Can we use it that way and this way? So, so, we, have, so we get both sides. So it's kind of tough for us to strike a balance, to say that way. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, <laughs> the, the way that we're architected, everything, everything is a driver. So yes. um, you can do pretty much anything you want with, uh, with most of the stuff. It's just we really only have like the reference driver for each mm -hmm. thing to make yeah. the system work the way it works now. But um, if anyone has development time and is interested in any of that kind of stuff, um, it shouldn't be that hard to do it. Uh, and we're definitely willing to help out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, again, yeah. come talk to us. We're, we are really friendly. Uh, seriously, <laughs> like, come by. We'll help you yeah. uh, get yeah. things working. Yeah. Is UDP support high on your list of things to mm. accomplish? It is not. Uh, so yeah, UDP support is a tricky one. So right now, our default backend is HAProxy, uh, and it doesn't have UDP load balancing support built in. Um, we could add it as a protocol that, that's mm -hmm. optional. Like there's there's some interesting stuff around that. Like how mm -hmm. do we add things well, that the, may or may not be supported the, by backends. So, so, so the other thing we found is, so, so we, we get a question a lot that people ask for UDP support, yeah. and then we go in and ask them, what do we actually want to do? And then often they don't need a load balancer for that. So we, so, so we haven't come, we have come across very, very rare use cases where they would have absolutely needed a load balancer, so that's why it's not high on our agenda. Yeah, I mean, but there are there are valid use cases. There are it's valid just, use cases, but but the, as I said, people come to say, oh, we need a UDP load balancer, and we look into it, and then they can do it a different way as well. So, yeah, I, I believe yeah. that. I believe yeah, that. They, yeah, there I are know. valid use cases. I know. Um, I know that there are use cases in the world, but it's they, just, yeah. yeah, it, yeah. it ha <laughs> as far as our roadmap goes, it has to be pretty low priority just because it's like one in 100 or yeah. less, and people mm -hmm. actually ask for that. 
Um, and I mean, we would love to get more backends besides just HAProxy. So if you know of a good backend that uh, we could implement that supports the rest of this stuff, but also mm -hmm. UDP, um, we'd love to see that integrated. Or, or just supports only UDP. We yeah, can do and that I too. know some of our vendors <laughs> may support UDP on their end. Mm -hmm. So being able to just yeah. expose it as a protocol um, is something mm -hmm. we could look at doing. Yeah. We just have to figure out how to do that. Okay. Well, the UDP thing, it's quite simple to add another protocol. We know yeah. that it's mm -hmm. simple. The, the key challenge was um, how, how can we support backends that does not support UDP right. in the sense that you will create a non-valid configuration. What will happen should be, I mean, yeah. this is quite simple in, in yeah. a sense. I mean, it shouldn't be a rocket science. So. Yeah, yeah so, so we can look at that. Um, I think, yeah, I don't, well, I don't know if that should be something that we look at with flavors or yeah, whether we, we can handle that in a different yeah, we, way. Yeah, yeah, we, Doing that with flavors wouldn't make much sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, it has to be a border call. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the reason we haven't done it in the past, uh, we, we, we know most vendors support it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, we we basically mm -hmm. it, it. Honestly, I'm thinking about it now. Yeah, it's probably pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we but, could, but we uh, could probably uh, expose it. I mean, I made mm -hmm. just no. We, we, the, the big problem has been in the past that we can only expose things where we have a reference implementation for it. Since we don't have a reference implementation for UDP, we couldn't expose it. But I, but maybe they they kind of so now as we are our own project and not anymore in neutron, we might have that flexibility. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> but but yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I I seriously I think it wouldn't be that hard. No, 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 it's not that hard. It was absolutely correct. No, it's not it was that hard. Um, in the past was completely political, so yeah. And you know, I, I did get mm -hmm. two at least of the three patch sets I promised you already in review mm -hmm. now, okay. rebased and and kind of ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, still have to do providers, but the mm -hmm. other two are there, uh, and I can look at that one if I have time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or, yeah. Can but we probably need to check yeah. our politics. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can propose the code either way. Yeah. We'll see what okay. happens. Hi. Hey. I don't know if it if it already exists or there are still plans. What about um, for the active active? Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah that, uh, there are huge plans for that. So basically, we, we have patches from uh, IBM, but they kind of dropped away those people, and so we have to figure out how we uh, kind of re rescue that. So basically, one of us would have to take it over multiple of us. That's one way of doing it. We also uh, there's, also another p uh, there's also another company which really would like to have active active, and they are talking about contributing uh, code to do that. So, 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 the, uh, so the IBM solution, they, they use OV, OVS on, on, a, on an extra VM and kind of to fan it out. The other solution uh, from this company, they want to they want to use the network fabric to do the, uh, the active active, and and we and we would love to have both. Yeah, I mean, we're, <laughs> we'd we're love to have both, but yeah, but we got to see how where the chips fall. Yeah, there are a couple patches that are kind of the base for that framework, um, and there's a spec that I think we're did we actually merge that? Spec? Yeah, the, the specs but merged. It yeah. could probably use a little bit of review at this point, um, maybe mm -hmm. some updates, but. Uh, yeah, there are a few patches that are sort of the base of that whole framework for Active Active. So if we can get those in, it should be uh, easier for people to add more methods. Because mm -hmm. Active Active is one of those things that uh, honestly tends to rely really heavily on an individual operator's like network fabric um, and the way that they're doing things. Because everybody does things differently, right? So um, yeah, we can we can kind of get you halfway there, uh, but uh, it's hard to do something that's generic enough to work anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'm working on something for that that involves uh, well, the biggest problem using is floating that, IPs. And well, the biggest CMP, problem in, in doing active-active uh, with the network fabric is that it's hard to replicate it in dev stack. Yeah, so then, that too. then you run into those problems. So it's a, it's a yeah, so, but, so, so that makes it a little bit more complex because stuff you then can't test is difficult to kind of maintain and things like that, but we are working on that. And, we yeah, can. That's it, yeah. and the other thing, we could use help for that. Yeah, <laughs> it was on... It was one of our slides. It was yeah. one of, yeah, it was on one of our, I think it's, uh, that was one of our goals for Queens, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. definitely want to do something. We want to have something to show yeah. for that. Hi. So from what your comments now, I understand that what you want to do is distribute the load towards a listener in several VMs 
Is that correct? My yeah. Understanding? Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 yeah the, the idea is you have one IP address or DNS name, and then it gets fanned out to as many virtual machines as yeah. are necessary mm -hmm. to to do your load. There, there, there are a few there are a few wrinkles on that, but that's basically the basic yeah, idea. Yeah. That was that was the IBM approach. No. Uh, no. That's also the networking well, approach. I mean, if, if, you, if you use a, a VM to do it, you use a network. The yeah. result is the same. Well, that's same. what I was saying. Using a VM to do that fan out with OVS mm -hmm. was uh, was the IBM approach. Yeah. The other approaches. I think using like BGP, right? You, yeah, using the, the, the network fabric to fan but, it out. But, uh, but, but the end result is you will have N VMs handling your load. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I thought when you were showing it in the slides, I was assuming that uh, your idea was to distribute the listeners, let's say that they have a load balancer, ah. a VM load balancer mm -hmm. with 10 listeners then okay. distribute the listeners. No, no, we, no uh, we didn't plan that. We, yeah, no, we, we plan to have uh, load, like every listener that's on a load balancer available. You know, available. All, concurrently, yeah, concurrently processing traffic. Yes, yeah. and, but scaled. But we could, but, but we can, yeah, if that's something, we yeah, you can definitely propose that and we can think about it if that makes sense to yeah. split it that, up. That said, um, if, if what you want to do is distribute your listeners horizontally, you can do that just by creating one load balancer per listener, right? But um, then you don't have the same IP. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah, that's definitely yeah. If that's you a don't feature. have high availability. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you have high availability in that the load ba each load balancer is still highly available. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. like it's yeah, it's a little different, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, splitting up the listeners is one approach, but it doesn't it doesn't answer or what a lot the major use case uh, I think. Uh, for yeah, I, I think yeah, we, we should we definitely need to think about splitting up listeners. That's yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. I, I mean, I think for us the the number one use case is basically mm -hmm. you have a load balancer. It has one listener that needs to scale dramatically, yeah, um, and we need to figure mm -hmm. out how to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can definitely look. Thank in. you. Yeah. yeah. may actually be running up on close on time anyway. I mean, we can, if that's it, we can let everybody uh -huh. go to lunch. And uh, like I said, I'll be around. Um, German will be around. Yeah, so you can always find us on, yeah, on IRC. <laughs> And, 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 and also, the, as I said, the vendors are here. I, I, don't, I don't make them stand up, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looking sick, everyone on those, yeah, it's very those poor souls. Yeah. But, thank you. Thank you.